Hey guys, my name is Ali Al Karguli. I'm a NASA postdoctoral fellow, and in this video, I'm going to show you five equations that explain 99% of physics, at least the physics that's practical, everyday physics that we use, that we build airplanes, cars, phones, cameras, chalkboards with. And if you understand these five equations very, very deeply, then you are set for life because the world is made up of physics and in the age of AI and automations and people worried about losing their jobs. I genuinely believe if you have a deep understanding of physics, you'll always have an understanding of reality. And that means you'll be able to critically think, solve problems and build things that the world needs and you'll always be in demand. Now, um, real quick, I'm also gonna show you how they are, I'm, I'm kind of gonna tell this as a story. I'm gonna start with the first equation, explain it, what it means, and I'm gonna keep transitioning into the next one and show you how all of physics is kind of uh, interconnected uh, in a really beautiful way. So by the time you're done with the video, uh, it's gonna be, I don't know, something that's very, very profound. Um, also, I wanna get some disclaimers out of the way. Uh, one, I have horrible handwriting, um, so I'm gonna try my best to show it to the best uh, I can. If you really care about great handwriting, I'm very sorry. Uh, second thing is that I am recording this at two in the morning, so I apologize for like the hor horrible lighting, why not? Uh, third thing is when I, uh, I, I wear two chains underneath my shirt, and sometimes when I'm erasing, it may make a poor sound. Uh, and then fourth thing is I'm wearing a SpaceX shirt. Um, I, I just have respect for great rocket engineering. I work at NASA, but all my NASA shirts are in the laundry, and I'm just wearing a SpaceX shirt. So yeah, um, now that we got the annoying people who leave comments out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and talk about physics. So the very first thing I want to talk about is F equals MA. And this equation is actually written wrong. It should not be written as F equals MA. It should be written as A equals F over M. And this is probably the most important starting point because this is the cause and effect equation. This is the equation that really describes the fundamental concept of physics as a whole. The idea is that like every action has a reaction. Uh, and the idea that if something is staying still, it stays still. If something gets a force acted on it, it starts moving. Uh, this is basically Newton's third laws, all described into one equation. Because if you remember the very first law, it says it's about inertia. It says an object that's like just sitting there, unless a force comes in and acts on it, it, it stays in its place. If a force acts on it, it starts moving. So if there's a force over here, then there is some type of acceleration. But if there's zero force, then there is zero acceleration. Both these equations check out. So that's something that's very important. Second law, obviously, is F equals MA. Third law is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If I basically punch um, this eraser right here and I hold it in place, the eraser basically punches me back, which is why my knuckles hurt a little bit when I punch this eraser. If you go and punch someone, not that I recommend you go ahead and do that, uh, and like, let's, let's say they stand still and the energy does not get distributed and them falling or whatnot, uh, your knuckles are guaranteed to hurt. They're probably gonna hurt. Uh, that's why uh, boxers wear gloves. So very first thing is F equals MA. Again, the way I really like writing it as A equals F over M because it's the cause and effect equation. And that's because usually external forces cause things to move. And if we think of an external force, that transitions us really nicely to the second equation, which is um, F equals G M1 M2 D squared. This is Newton's gravitational law. and this G is some sort of constant that makes the math work out quite nice. We're gonna just kind of get rid of it. This is kind of useless in terms of this argument. We're just gonna turn this into like a squiggle, which means kind of, sort of, instead of like exactly equal to. And all this equation really tells us something that's very interesting is in the presence of two masses, there's two objects that exist, they exert forces on one another. And the strength of that force depends a lot on the distance between them. Now this is squared and it's in the denominator, which means the further they are, like if they're, if they're twice as far, the forces are four times weaker. So things get weaker much, much quicker. Um, and this is again, something that's kind of not really well taught in school. Because for example, as I'm standing on this floor right here, the earth is pulling on me. Uh, well, like the earth is pulling me on me, but I'm also pulling back on the earth. We're kind of in a toxic relationship. Or like the, the earth is trying to like, I don't know, pull me and I'm like, nope, I'm not coming, but like I also cannot leave. And then I'm pulling the earth as well. Uh, so it's kind of very, very weird. Even though, for example, this eraser and this chalk, uh, they are actually attracting each other right now. So because this has mass, this has mass, uh, but the mass is so low, like the masses here are so low that when compared along with this gravitational constant, um, that these guys are pulling on each other, just like how I'm pulling on this phone and I'm pulling on the chalk and the chalk pulls on me and the eraser is pulling on me and I'm pulling on the eraser and everything around me in this room is pulling onto each other due to this. So because there's a force that exists, 
going back to the first one, f equals ma, or a equals f over m. So that basically means that there's always some type of acceleration. So actually, this chalk is moving a little bit towards me, and I'm moving a little bit towards the chalk. And it's kind of crazy. So again, and just from these two first equations alone, we get an understanding that physics is kind of wild, at least like Newtonian mechanics physics. This was stuff that was probably discovered a long time ago, but was really formulated officially in the 1600s, which was only 500 years ago, which is kind of crazy. It shows you that uh, in just 500 years, like humans have developed a lot in terms of understanding of the physics and the technology. Um, so yeah, something that very, very interesting that happens when we transition to equation number three, is we see an equation that looks very similar to this one, which is f equals k instead of g, and instead of m1, m2, it's q1, q2 over d squared. And this is actually describing the exact same thing. Instead, while this is describing gravitational force or gravitational field, um, this is describing an electrical force. Okay, um, So just like how two masses are usually pulling on each other, and in the presence of two masses, um, a force happens, if there were two charges to exist, such as like a plus or a minus or a minus or a plus, some electron and some proton or two electrons in space, independent of how far they are from each other, just the, their presence is going to create some type of force, which is again dependent on the distance between them. So for example, again, if I have like a plus charge over here and a minus charge, and they're just kind of floating in free space, depending on how far they are from each other, basically squared, they are going to experience some type of force. But something magical starts happening with this equation relative to the previous one, where here, the forces can only be attracted to each other. In mass, at least based on our current understanding, things only pull each other towards each other. And um, in the case of electrostatics, or in this case, like Coulomb, this is called Coulomb's law, um, you can call, think of it like as the electric force law or whatnot, or, or just kind of similar to the um, gravitational force equation over here. Uh, if these guys are opposite charges, they attract. But if they're the exact same charge, then they experience the exact same force, the exact same magnitude. So the math still checks out, but it's going to be in the opposite direction. And this one fascinating thing that we see about um, electromagnetics versus mechanics is that mechanics is kind of like unidirectional. There's only attraction. Gravitational uh, fields only pull things towards each other. However, we notice here that electric fields and electric forces, depending on the charge well, that cr creates the electric field or the electric force, um, you, can, you can experience attraction or repulsion, which is kind of very weird because like, they're, almost, they're basically the exact same equation. So they're th like, think of it like, like it's as if God wrote the same algorithm for both mechanics and electromagnetics, but in one case, you can have attraction and repulsion, and in another case, you only have attraction. It's kind of really, it's kind of really interesting. Uh, we as humans still do not fully understand why that is. And who knows, maybe there is repulsion, uh, in gravity that you've, you, you've, can, you've probably read, I don't know, if you've ever gone down like the rabbit holes of Wikipedia, things, I don't know, like like um, like different kinds of matter than the ones that like we're familiar with or whatnot. But at least as of, I don't know, our cu current macro physics that we understand and see, uh, we, we have not really observed, um, I don't know, like uh, different kinds of, uh, like like this bi-directional force in, fa in the in, in face of gravity, just the same way we experience it in, electri in electricity. Now, the nice thing is that if you take this equation right here, Coulomb's law, equation number three, um, which basically can be also understood through uh, the first uh, four of Maxwell's equations, which is Gauss's law for the electric fields, which basically tells you that, and this is like equation, I don't know, like 3.5, this is not quite equation four yet, we're about to move on to equation four, which basically tells you that the divergence of an electric field is going to be equal to like some charge density rho, right? Some type of charge, uh, Q, uh, with respect to some type of volume. Um, and this uh, also has some like permittivity value, depending on the material that the electric field is present in, is going to change. But, the, but, but then the, the more interesting equation that has an even cooler description is equation number four. So it's basically describing the curl of a magnetic field. I'm going to explain what that is, basically. And it relates it to current density plus changing electric field with respect to time. Now, this is a very, very powerful equation. And this kind of, again, really kind of sums up electromagnetics for me, even though this is equation four uh, in Maxwell's equation, as I've made a separate video on Maxwell's equations, should be somewhere below uh, in the description. But uh, this is basically the Maxwell, uh, the Ampere-Ampere-Maxwell law. And this is the Ampere portion 
this is the Maxwell portion, basically is the idea that a changing magnetic field or an induced magnetic field can be caused by two things. Either you pass some current through a wire, and that creates a magnetic field, or you change an electric field, and that causes a magnetic field. And to me, this is a very beautiful equation because it's relating three things. It's relating a magnetic field, electric charge, or slash current. And again, current is just charge moving. Uh, and then the electric field. Now, this basically tells you that these three things are related, which means charge that create fields, um, in the case of the first law in Maxwell's equations, um, can, fields can also exist on their own, and then fields can induce each other. And this kind of also tells you that uh, this is, again, like, like a plus sign, meaning there's an OR gate, not an AND gate, meaning only some current. So if I have a wire here, and I have a bunch of current moving through it, then that's going to create some static magnetic field. And then if I have a changing electric field, also changing through the wire, that's also going to create um, a an, an magnetic field. Although since the electric field would be changing back and forth, the magnetic field will also be changing back and forth. So depending on what's actually going on in terms of the behavior of the current or the, or the electric field, um, you're going to have either a magnetic field that's static or, or, or dynamic. But the cool part is transitioning to equation number five, which is if you take um, this equation and combine it with the third one in Maxwell's equations, which uh, is basically just uh, Faraday's law. So you basically see that the opposite is also true, that a changing magnetic field exerts an electric field, which brings us to something that's very, very interesting, which is kind of the transition from, so in, in equations one and two, we were talking about mechanics. Equations three and four, we talked about electromagnetics. Then equation number five, we transition from this equation four in something that's really cool, which is the wave equation. So again, this equation is also very, very cool. This is basically the first time where we start talking about space and time. Uh, and we start relating them together. As we can see over here, the wave, the wave, this u over here is the wave function. It's basically the wave spreading spatially. And we see that its movement in space, I'm sorry, in time, is related to its movement in space. And the relationship between it is this um, speed, right? This is the speed at which the wave propagates. But here's where it gets crazy, and here's where it connects back to Maxwell's equations, is that if you take this v squared and replace it with c squared, which is the speed of light, then we can, and we know that there's speed of light is equals to one over mu naught e naught, at least in free space, then we can already start seeing that this also describes the behavior of electromagnetic waves. And I've made a separate video on the channel, I'll probably put a link for it below or, some, or, or something, that actually shows you how you can use Maxwell's equations, three and four, Faraday's law and Ampere-Maxwell law, combine them together, and then you can actually generate the wave equation. But here's the other cool part. So even though like if we were to think of like mechanics, electromagnetics as like the kind of like top down approach and then there's like modern physics, like things like relativity and quantum physics, this equation also nicely transitions into relativity and quantum physics because relativity um, relates space and time, at least in the case of, of general relativity. And quantum mechanics is also uh, talks a lot and it kind of starts out with um, wave behavior. As a matter of fact, Schrodinger's equation is a case of the wave equation. And you can kind of dive into that rabbit hole as well. However, I really think with just this equation alone, you can get a really deep understanding of the universe because um, like everything is kind of made of waves. Um, you, you can even argue that, like yeah, everything is made of waves. And even if you study Fourier transforms and Fourier series, you learn in Fourier series that uh, if you add up any type of, uh, like you can add up a bunch of sines and cosines together and create any type of function which means mathematically, if you add up a bunch of waves together, you can literally like shape any type of shape mathematically, uh, which is kind of indication that like waves kind of can be combined to make up things in the universe, which is kind of at least like one way I like, I like to think of it. So again, to summarize what we've gone through is a really cool journey from mechanics to electromagnetics to the interface of modern physics in just five equations. We started by stating that Newton's third laws can be basically summarized in a simple equation that tells you that any type of force causes a reaction that's usually some type of motion or vice versa. We have related how this um, 
can also, we also talked about the idea how two masses or two objects in space can it be attracted to each other through a, a, a gravitational field. We've also seen how there's a very similar thing that happens with charges, where instead of two objects, you have two charges. If they are the same charge, they're going to repel each other. If they are different charges, they're going to attract each other in, in an equal force, which is, again, very fascinating. Then we talked about um, the fourth law of Maxwell's equations, which is the Ampere-Maxwell law, which, again, stated that a changing magnetic field um, is going to be caused by either a current density, J, um, and then this um, mu naught basically has to do with the material that the current is, is traveling through. And then same thing here, mu naught, e naught. This is basically describing the material in which the electric field is changing through. And then finally, we went over our good friend, the wave equation. So anyway, just kind of a brief summary of these equations. I really think if you understand these equations very well and you see how they kind of transition from one to the other and how they relate to one another, um, I think you have a really, really solid foundation. Again, because a lot of the stuff we build in the real world is based on mechanics and electromagnetics. Um, and even though, yes, there's like cooler stuff emerging in terms of physics, like again, quantum physics and relativity, um, especially more quantum, more quantum things, um, the, the wave equation here is a really nice interface between things that go on in mechanics and things that go on uh, in the quantum world as well. Since wave behavior is kind of something that's we start we we we, we see um, very frequently. Obviously, things on the microscopic level um, start behaving a little weird. And and the nice thing about macroscopic physics, and even though electromagnetics deals with charges, which are like microscopic, uh, this kind of physics is very predictable. It's extremely like like predictable cause and effect. Once you go to like quantum, um, things start getting really, really weird, but that's going to be a topic for another video. But yeah, with that being said, um, yeah, if you like this video, then I hope, I don't know, you enjoy it. Check out my other videos on physics. I make a few of them. I make some videos on career advice, some videos on a bunch of things, basically whatever I think helps students. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or if you'd like to, if you, let me know what you'd like to see next, leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and love.